Hello guys and girls and welcome back. It's Big John here, the app's at the bottom of the screen. And today we're gonna to be talking about Pip Hunter. Pip Hunter is an amazing trend and momentum indicator that you can find on TradingView. And we're gonna have Taylor Bright, the actual architect of Pip Hunter, showing us how to use it on a live stream. Check this out. This is phase one. There's yeah. one more to come. Right, we'll start off. We'll start off with what everything is first. Yeah. So, right. If I, in fact, we'll start with the momentum. So, what you'll note from the momentum is you've got a couple of lines drawn on here. You've got one that runs at forty and one that runs at minus forty. These are like thresholds as such. So this whole thing is measuring a percentage. Okay. The percentage, it's, the percentage it's measuring is based off of 14 calculations, of which I've determined different weights for them depending on how severe they are of the trend. So there's a couple of them that run on a longer term, which have more weight to them than the shorter term ones. Yeah. Which is why if I weighted everything evenly, this would probably have come down here when really it's actually just a minor move. Okay. I get so the weighting was important to make sure that it stayed as a, like a more of a long flow and anything that wasn't going to be a big move just mm. gave a little blip in it. Okay, okay. There's a couple of things to note with momentum. Uh, have we got any good kind of pieces of it? Yeah. If you set it to area, which I'll show you how you do that now. So when you've got it in you click on the settings cog style first plot you can change it from I think it's that one by default and you yeah. can change it to area that's what I've done more recently yeah that's what I've done and as well I'm on the one you can, minute you, you can see the divergence is a lot better yeah but what you've also got when you've had like a period of sustained 100% you'll get a little bit down and then like it tends to hit and then often that one was a bad example, but quite regularly, it will just tap it and then come back down again. But it literally taps 100 and off it goes. There was an example. Okay, there. I get what you're saying. Uh, there's another one there. This is not as such proper divergence, but it's like a last tap as such. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, that's just measuring. 14 different things, all with different weights, and that's why it makes it flow. Uh, moving on to the main chart, you have auto fib levels. What I tend to do, because it keeps the chart nice and clean, is I don't have lines on. If I'm going to put a line on, it's so easy just to press like Alt H, and then you can put the line you want on. I mean, the only two I would ever probably have on are those the 382 and the 61.8. Okay. But I never really have them. I can just when because if you've got your grid on, you can pretty much see them anyway. Yeah, you know when they're gonna hurt, roughly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so. And it's such a hazy thing. It's like you could almost call it a bound from here to here, and it's close enough. Yeah, yeah. It's an area, not like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you've got your pivot points. So you've got your you get dotted lines. So you've got a lower low there, where it had come up and broken the um, higher high, and then another higher high, and it will just keep plotting them as and when you get little retracements like that. Now, the thing that goes with those is, you see those little X's? Yeah. Those are when you've broken through. So if you notice, none of those candles are quite broken through until that one. Very oh, okay. So they're just your fractal breaks, again. There's another one where you've got one there and then broke back under and then broke that through again. Okay. So you've got two X. That's why you've got two X's there. And that's all X's are. They're just when you've broken your position. Okay, 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 okay. Your, the three lines in your ribbon, they are, they essentially come from a Williams alligator, which I've modified so that the offset is correct. And tinkered with them a little bit, but yeah. for all intents and purposes, they've been shifted to the left, so they're in the right time. Why is. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Um, your these and the squares and triangles on your handles are the exact same thing. So what this is, the difference between red and green is whether you are above or below the SSL channel that backs it. If you're below it, naturally it'd be red. If you're above it, it would be green. Okay. The reason it goes from like pale, like dark green to light green, light green is when you've had an absence of chop. So that, uh, no, I'm not going to, I was going to show the code, I'm not going to. Um, there is, if you were to see the code for it, I've mm -hmm. programmed an element where it measures the rate of chop in the market. When there's too much chop, it then dims the candle out because your momentum has died off, essentially. Okay. When there is no chop, that's when you then get your bright green, and that's when it changes to a triangle. So it's just measuring the chop. That's the difference right. between the light and the dark. So that's where you've got no momentum, and you can see it's completely stagnant. Then you get some momentum, and it stays green, 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 until there where it's just detected a little bit of chop. Oh, so that, that shows you in that one minute move, you could have stayed in that trade until you started seeing some sort of chop coming up on the top, basically. I yeah, take it. so you could have entered at the end of that candle, assuming your volume down there was correct. Yeah, of course. And you could have pulled out at the end of that one, that would have been 250 pips, but if your momentum was still high, you would have known it was just a little retrace. And what was the momentum like? Yeah, your momentum's still high, so you could still stay in that because it's still bright green. Right, right. So at the end of that, so at the end of that candle, you could have entered. Yeah. And you would still be funding. 28 minutes and 323 pips later. Your, uh, where I would exit is, so there is your example, if I plot that on a chart. So for all intents and purposes, green, that's got maximum momentum. That's on some good momentum. You could enter there. You would have had 33 pips of drawdown, but at this candle, that candle, You've killed all chop and your momentum is now weakened because it's got to the olive colour. At that point, I literally just close because it's like, yeah, okay, let's get out. Okay, I get what you mean. Uh, that is, when you're on a one minute chart, I tend to set this if you scroll all the way down on the inputs to 15 minutes. Just to catch any trends. What you can do for something that's really volatile is maybe you can go to the 30. But you shouldn't really need it. Because the 30 would get you in too late for some things so like that. It got you in too late where the 15 gets you in right up here. Okay. I see what you're saying. So what? What? When you really change that time? Yeah, sorry. Go on, go on, Josh. Go. On. No, I was going to say. Really, you're waiting on. It's easy to get faked out on lower time frames, as everybody knows. So really, just waiting on all the confluences. Yeah. yeah. So with this, like, I can take on one minute US thirty, and pretty comfortably go. Oh, that's not going to do that. If I know the trend, like, what I might often do is go like thirty minute. Get rid of that. Get rid of that and just have a look and see what it looks like. So, when we were coming down here, I was saying buys because I knew it was a second thing of the W. Yeah. And I called that, and let's see where I called that. Yeah, you called that ages ago in the group. I'm just scrolling up to see how far ago it was. Mm. Six. What time? Ah, uh, five thirty-seven. 
that's UTC plus one, 537 puts you at about seven minutes into that. So you get to one minute. There you go, 537 is that candle right there. So if I put a line. So what, on the 15 minute, On the 15 minute, I'd seen it had done that, come up, that was the 618 of that move. So 618 comes down, as soon as it levelled with that, I kind of went, oh, that's going to be a, um, like, as soon as it had levelled, I kind of went, oh, it's just going to be another W. Yeah. It'd be quite a safe entry catching it there, because your drawdown at that point, maximal, would have been, what well, your stop loss would have been 37 pips. But you would then have held, because if I draw... Fib two from that to there. That was my take profit up here, or would have been because I didn't actually take it in the end. But which would have been four hundred and seventy-seven pips. Okay. But on the fifteen minute, I kind of quickly identified. So my initial plan was on the hourly. Oh, I just couldn't do hourly. On the hourly, you've seen it come up. It's kind of sitting there, and I kind of expected it to come down for a reach race, mm. which is why I was bearish all the day, pretty much. And why I managed to ride that big move there, that move there, and that one there. Once that had happened, then you, I very quickly saw, hey, look, we've got a pretty consistent support level there. So as it came down that last time, I was like, oh, it's just going to be a W. You know, go back up. i drawn my, already off the 15 minute, drawn my fib just there and kind of went up. Oh, it'll be somewhere around there that it kind of pulls back. I'd also, on the five minute, on the five minute, I'd even said it was going to pull back when we got to there because if what I saw was resistance, resistance, resistance. Oh, okay, I get it. A couple more taps up there. So that's how I'd also call that little pullback in there. So you draw, you draw support and resistance lease on like small time frames like that, yeah. US 30 iOS, because of the nature of it, and yeah, yeah, it's moves, you, it, yeah. you kind of bring it down in your time frames. Because if you're taking a position in four hour of US 30, can need a lot of account size to place a point on one lot, for instance. So it's easier to get yeah, a sniper really, entry. Really need to get a sniper entry. <laughs> so what you got planned for the matrix then? That's the question. Well, uh, Pip Hunter. I've got to remember to call it Pip Hunter. <laughs> so, first things first, there's a couple of, I want to get my risk, my, like, risk management panel done. Yeah. Which would literally be like a full on calculator on the side of the screen almost. Yeah. So, in your settings, so in the here, you'll put like risk percentage. Yeah. And my aim is that it will see current price, because you can get it to see current price. You could then type in stop loss level and it will calculate that much risk and it will tell you your lot size accordingly. Mm. That's the aim. Right. That's good. So you put a count size in there, then it will tell you that, basically. That's what you're saying. Yeah. You tell it percentage risk, mm. the stop loss, and your account size, and it will go, oh, if you're entering from now, it's this This is how much you should enter this trade and it'll with. it tell you your lot size. Wow. Because having your lot size written down for you stops you guessing, and it stops you over-leveraging, and it stops you doing stupid stuff. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, I was telling my group that as well to, um, yesterday. I was telling them. That's what... That's what these little flags here are for. You see a flag. So in a downtrend, that little flag is like, hey, you should really think about taking the profit off the table and wait for another move. Yeah. Okay, I get what you're saying. And what would you say is the best time frame to, to trade the Pip Hunter system with? What would you say is most practical? You can use it on every, I take it, but what would you say is ideal? Uh, if you're doing like... So Jumps. Where I'm going to be giving signals and that, because mm -hmm. that's going to be a signal room in the Discord at some point. Yeah, of course. Um, 
that signal floor will probably take trades based off like the four hourly or something. Yeah. Because on the four hourly, uh, if we go to a pick a forex pair, anyone you like. Um, GBP JPY, even though it moves like a sand snake. Uh, we'll go to the this thing was consolidating hourly. in London session. It consolidated like hell. It's consolidated for like yeah, two weeks. <laughs> look, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Look at the sad snack. <laughs> it's ridiculous, mate. But if you call that drop down, yeah, you call one signal. You call one signal. Mm. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. If you really want it, although you've had to take profit flag there and there, so you could have called it off, say there, taken, or even still being in it. Yeah, but for if newbies, if they're holding that with zero point zero one, then you know that's still decent for them. It's not nothing too over leveraging. You know what I mean? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's three hundred pips. Mm -hmm. From there to peak would be just a hair over four hundred. Yeah. That's not if bad. you're catching a move like this and calling every sell at every retrace on the four hourly, okay, it's entry for instance, which would be, whoops, uh, let's just quickly put that to weekly. Mm, it seems like it's easier to trade with Pip Hunter on long term with currency. But obviously, like you said, with like Dow Jones and those ones, probably a scalping move because. It just looks very clean when you're doing it with currencies like this. So, for instance, if I set this, the so I've set the bottom one to the daily, and I'm on the four hourly, and it's saying the downtrend started here. Mm. So that's the crossover point. So I'm now looking for a sell signal. You've gone to good momentum. You had one chance at it there, but it was too choppy. You've had a plus, a down a bearish plus there as well. Mm -hmm. So. First sign of no chop is there, so you would enter there. Uh, I need to do now. And so where was it? Was that kind of there? You would enter at the end of that. Even if you went until it went green, that's a 1200 pip move. Yeah, that's a lot. 27 days. If you've called, if you took, say, when it made that lower high. That's 1200. After the retrace, that was 1500. Yeah, it's 27 days, but you've also had an entry here somewhere, an entry here somewhere, an entry here somewhere. Yeah. You could probably have had an entry in there as well. Yeah, because you've got four hours, you, and you would have checked, because I take it that was a key support level. You see where the lower low was? Guaranteed if you put a line there, it's hit there before somewhere in history. Close enough, it must have hit there, surely. Uh, 124 is its all time low. Oh, swear, so it went even lower than that in history down there. As far as I've known, oh no, it's not. I thought 124. No, nah, yeah. I can see something over the here. Lower lows down there. Yeah. And the pass uh, there. So the you last do, time if you do your due diligence, like yeah. 2012. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking, nah, that must have hit there somewhere. But yeah. And again in 2009. That would have been peak of the recession. Yeah, that would have been the recession. Yeah, that was as well. Which would make sense. That it plummeted. Yeah. Funny that, isn't it? Every 10 years, the currency yeah, just plummets. The thing with the yen is it always performs well in recessions. It's a safe haven currency. Okay. Okay, that makes sense, though. So that's what I'm uh, the way I'm seeing it because people are doing well with this system, my friend. Somebody just private messaged me now and was like, because they're ready for the live um, stream with them. And um, what did they say? They basically said uh, they made eight hundred dollars so far off of US thirty. That's what they said since they've had it. So I told them to give me a screenshot so I can put in the testimonies. That's good. Excellent. To be fair, if I can see people making, if people are making money from it, yeah, like consistently, that's enough that they then might go, oh, I'll get the full version when it's done. Mm -hmm. or I'll like tell friends and family about it. Yeah, that's, that's the aim, just to get something that people can use cleanly and go, hey, this is quite good. 
Yeah, most deaf. And that makes perfect sense as well. I think it's a good idea to give them this level of it, even though this alone, from what I can see, and once you learn how to use it, you know, take a week to learn how to use it, you're definitely going to be profitable. Like I said, I feel like if you do this with longer term trades, especially on currencies, you're going to be more successful if you're not, if you're a beginner. That's what I can see from it. And a lot of my people in my group that are still kind of beginners, they're using it on um, longer term trades. I had a guy that the first day he had it, 24 hours. Even Ken, yeah, he's in here as well. Um, yeah, he said he's made $400 off of it in the first 24 hours, I believe it was, as well. Which is good. The thing I would suggest doing with it, four days a day, it's a pair that loves to train. Yeah. It's completely sore to work. You get, okay, the trends aren't, like, they're not a lot of pips. Like, that's 500 pips. That's 600 pips. But it's just easy. It's like rinse and repeat day after day. Or JPY should be about the same. Okay. But you get lots of little trends that you can take completely. And you're saying off a daily chart or at least a four hour if you want to catch these types of trends? Yeah. Okay, makes sense. But they're pairs that do particularly well in trends. Okay, so this is a good question now, yeah? So if you're waiting, because it always looks nice when we back test, but so let's say you're waiting at one point for a trend to start and you're thinking, okay, when am I going to enter this trend? What would be your yeah. confluence to say, okay, like the last trend that just happened there, this red, this bearish trend that went down. Okay, it's yeah. green there. I've done my analysis through loads of pairs and I'm thinking, okay, this is about to come down. I see it's got weaker on the momentum. There's a possibility it could drop. How would I know to say, okay, yeah. Do I look at my down t trend um, sign at the top do I like what would be my confidence to say this is possibly going down first of all I would have probably because you made your lower high here no your lower low here yeah you've then made a lower high I'm okay. wanting to see how it wants to break that lower low when you've had that candle here if I zoom in uh -huh. on it I get you already <laughs> you've had that candle there yeah that has made a wick that comes down into that lower low bottom so you've made a wick you've mm -hmm. got no chop that said that you're in a downtrend again and you've gained momentum so i'm not entering till the end of that candle close which yeah i lose that much of a move but you know what it's far safer that i can go and hey, look mm. it's got to break that wick which means it's got to make a new low and then i'll take it because that we know there's momentum mm. we know there's momentum you know there's a lack of chart because it's gone bright red. You're in a confirmed downtrend, so it's like, what's going wrong? It's on a daily chart. You'd have to be bloody god to move that. <laughs> it would, yeah. To so suddenly definitely. spike that back up because your stop loss on the daily chart. For all intents and purposes, you could have set your stop loss here at the high, lower high, at which point you would literally have to have had some cataclysmic event for it to move 174 pips that way. Yeah. That's not even bad, because if you did that on a 0 10, that would have been like 150. But you still could have got good... You just use this in normal candles. Yeah, you can use it in normal candles, yeah. Renko, Haikonashi, whatever you feel like. Mm. You could probably even use it with line break candles if you felt like it. <laughs> No, you, could, you could do it. Renko. Yeah, I like Renko. the way the Renko's look. Renko just makes everything trend. So is it actually realistic catching the trend like this? Because sometimes it's like the Renko, it is showing the moves, but uh, I've gone to one, I can't remember how I've done it, but it's like it's been delayed or it's not correct. to what the, I think I was with Alex at one point. He's telling me GJ's going... Down, I'm like, no, no, the Renko's are saying GJ's going up. So, how do Renko's work in relation to that? If you don't mind me asking that question, right? Uh, do you know how Renko candles formed anyway? No, no, I, I saw one video on it, and it's like when it's solid green or red, that means obviously the move is going to continue in that trend until a solid green or red appears. That's pretty much the biggest part of the information I've got on it, right? So, Renko, when you're making uh, can I do stop shape? The same, we've got two minutes remaining as well. Does that mean it's going to lock us all out of here? Yeah, I'll make another one if not. Yeah. Uh, no, I want to shake on that. Right, so when you've got your Renko candle, 
that is X amount of pips. The next one is the same number of pips, and so is the next one. That's the same number of pips. Mm. When it goes, if you were, so there are all, if I just put X is for going up, and then the ne say that one then comes down, that has done twice the move. So ten, say that was 10 pips, that's 10 pips, that's 10 pips. To do that, that's 20 pips okay. back. So they're all a given range, but because you've got to, rather than making one up here, you've made the next one would be down here. Yeah. That you've covered all of that range and then 10 pips. Okay, I get you, I get you. That's why it's gone down. That's how rank codes work. That makes sense. But what they do nicely, stuff like that, so you can catch your trade, you're in a downtrend, it's a confirmed downtrend at that point, and you've had a nice, you've had a fractal break, you can go one, two, three, four, it's come up, it's rejecting off of that, so you can still be in it, continuing, rejecting, continue, rejecting, continue, I'd probably, have, because you're starting to consolidate a bit, think about taking profit off the table, then when you start, or at least take like 50% off, if not more, as it's consolidating, then as it comes down again, you're knowing that it comes up, you know that it's going to just do it, it's just testing this sort of level again, hence yeah. why it's in line with the lows, you can even take another entry and continue riding, and then as it's sort of in there, you can start thinking about taking profits, or when it's broken that third line, when it breaks the third line chance. And that about wraps it up. If there's any questions you may have, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, comment and share because if I grow, you guys grow. If you grow, I grow. You know how it goes. So yeah, I'm going to be changing my Telegram group into a Discord group. But for now, you can still get at me on Telegram. If there's any updates, I will put that on YouTube. You will be able to see that. And I think that's about it. So yeah, please have a nice time out there. Be safe as Corona is really causing a lot of problems. And have long life and prosperity. Peace.